All right, so optical isomers. Optical isomers are non-identical mirror images. Optical isomers are non-identical mirror images. The word optical here is not very useful. It's a little bit of a historical uh, curiosity. They're called optical isomers. Maybe it would be better to call them mirror isomers. So one skill we need here is to be able to draw the mirror image of something. Let's think about the letter A. Let's draw the mirror image of the letter A. Well, here's how I would do that. First of all, I'm going to draw a mirror. So let's imagine that this is the mirror. Let's say that the letter A was looking in a mirror. Over here, I'm going to draw what it would see. Well, wouldn't it see this? This is pretty much the mirror image of this letter A. OK. Now, are these the same letter or different letters? Same. They're the same. All right, so does A have an optical isomer? No, because it has an identical mirror image. And optical isomers only refers to non-identical mirror images. These are identical mirror images, so the letter A doesn't have any optical isomers. I guess there's actually a more general definition of optical isomers that uh, has to do with more than just mirror images in, in uh, organic chemistry. But I think for your class, we can just stick to this. For your class, we can just stick to the mirror images idea for optical isomers. Now how about, say, the letter C? Let's draw what the mirror image of the letter C would look like. Right. It wouldn't look, at least originally, it wouldn't look like this. It would look like this. Now, are these the same letter or different letters? Same. Letter. That's right. They're the same, even though they look different, because you could rotate or flip this picture so it looks like this picture. How could you flip it? There's a bunch of different flips you could do. You could rotate it 180 degrees, or you could flip it like this. There's a bunch of different flips you could make. So for example, if you um, simply rotate this 180 degrees, it'll look like this. Or if you flip it like this, it'll look like this. So we can see that, again, these are actually identical mirror images, even though they look different. So does the letter C have an optical isomer? No. All right. In fact. Uh, Two-dimensional structures, I think, uh, can never have optical isomers. We're going to have to get into three dimensions before we can start to get optical isomers. Okay. Um, so these don't have any optical isomers. But the important point I wanted to make is just because the mirror images look different doesn't mean they are different. You have to ask if there's a way you can flip or rotate one of them so it looks like the other. And that's the hard part of the class. This was an easy example. Well, what would be an example of something that does have a non-identical mirror image? Well, the example you probably saw in class was your hands. Um, if, you looked, um, so, uh, if, I, if you looked at the mirror, for the mirror image of my hand, well, it would look like this, right? My two hands are mirror images of each other. If this hand looked in the mirror, it would see this. But are these identical? No. How can you tell? Well, there's no way I could rotate this so it looks like this. For example, right now, um, this hand has its thumb on, um, well, this is to your left. Yeah. So here, the, my thumb is on your left. Um, whereas here, my thumb is on your right. Well, what if I rotated this so that both thumbs are in the same direction? Well, now both thumbs are in the same direction, but now my palm is facing you on this hand, and the back of my hand is facing you here. So there's no way I can get everything in the same position here. When the thumbs are in the same position, the palms are in the wrong positions. And when the palms are in the correct positions, the thumbs are in the wrong positions. So what would be the relationship between my hands, according to this structure? Which type of isomer would they be? Oh, that would be optical. These would be optical isomers. Notice how they have the same connectivity. In both cases, my pinky is connected next to my ring finger, and my ring finger is connected next to my middle finger, etc. but they have different arrangements in space. Then, now this might seem pretty unimportant, but of course this is of a lot of practical importance. Uh, for example, if you go to buy gloves, you can't just buy uh, any old gloves. You've got to buy right-hand gloves and left-hand gloves. So it makes a big difference that your two hands are different from each other. Or even more important, shoes, right? It makes a big difference whether something's a right shoe or a left shoe, because again, your feet are non-identical mirror images.
Now notice the work that I had to do here. How did I prove to you that these were not identical? Well, I thought about the possible rotations I could make. I could rotate them so the thumbs are in the right positions, but then the palms would be in the wrong positions. I might also try rotating like this, but that won't help us either. So there's a bunch of rotations I could do, but nothing works. Now the hard part is, how you have to, it takes experience to learn when you've tried all the different rotations and to make sure that you've rotated things correctly to see whether they're the same or not. Well, let's look at some examples that have to do with this material. Oh, well, let's deal with this example. We want to figure out whether this has an optical isomer. So let's draw the mirror image of this compound. Here's the mirror. Here's the mirror image. So what did we decide? Um, are these, uh, does this have an optical isomer? No, these are the same. It's obvious they're the same. They just look the same originally. So these are clearly the same. Now let's try this compound. Let's decide whether this has an optical isomer, this new compound. This is the transform now. Right, those are good pictures. Now we have to decide whether these are isomers or identical. So it's good that you saw that since this is closest to the mirror, it should be closest to the mirror in this picture. And since this is further from the mirror, it should be further from the mirror in this picture. That's the way mirrors work. So what are we deciding? Does this have an optical isomer? Yeah, what's the relationship between these two pictures? Are they isomers or identical? identical? Yeah, they don't look identical, they don't look the same, but you could rotate this so it looks like this. For example, you could rotate this 90 degrees. If you rotate everything 90 degrees, it'll look like this. So these really are identical mirror images, so these are just the same molecule. All right, so this is how you tell whether something has an optical isomer. You have to actually draw the mirror image, and then if it doesn't look identical, you have to try rotating it to see if it can become identical. Um, I guess another way that we could have um, rotated this is we could take this molecule and flip it like this, and again, they would be the same. Uh, and that's what I predicted, because like I said, I think anything that's two-dimensional two can't have an optical isomer, and this is still square planar. So I don't think it can have an optical isomer because it's, it's, it's flat. It's not in three dimensions. It's only in two dimensions. So let's start working. Three-dimensional compounds. 